Hello, my name is Daniel. I'm from Vega and I'm going to talk about how a digital lab should actually look and feel like uh, today. And this presentation is thought to be a uh, inspiration on uh, how you can actually start on your digitalization path. And I'm going to start um, with a very brief introduction uh, of uh, Vega. So the company I'm working for, um, and then I actually right away start into and we'll dive into the, the topic. So Vega's vision is uh, to build a bridge between business and IT, and uh, we see ourselves uh, in the middle of that bridge between the life science business and uh, the informatics uh, departments, and hence we do have. Uh, uh, most of our employees uh, with double uh, qualification, so as a chemist or a biologist or bioinformatician, etc., and uh, the required IT background or education. And by being on that uh, bridge, we can actually work as a 360 degree service provider in uh, pharma or more general life science uh, and also healthcare informatics business. We are organized uh, around four pillars of excellence. So we do have a team that focuses on lab and research informatics. We do have a team that focuses on clinical development informatics. We have a department that provides the informatics solutions uh, to uh, the two domains I was just mentioning. And we also have a computer system validation and quality assurance uh, team. And um, with this, we are able to uh, help you with, for instance, starting by doing a um, analysis of your landscape and propose new systems or how the system landscape should look like to you. We help you do process analysis, requirement analysis. If you, for instance, like to select a new limb system or a near land system or a, also a clinical trial management system in the, for your clinical trials, etc. And um, we do have the pro appropriate uh, education and know-how inside the company with business analysts, project managers, and experts in all these areas. And just to give you an example, maybe um, you uh, do maybe have a, a limbs which is already uh, like 10, 15, or 20 years old. You like to replace that. What we do is we probably start with analyzing the business processes, creating an as is view, and uh, starting to shape the to be view together with you, with uh, involving our knowledge uh, of the landscape of vendors, etc. And then finally, help you shaping the requirements. Uh, document doing the rfp helping you finding a vendor and finally also maybe if you want uh help you to implement the system decommission the old system do a data migration and also accompany yourself uh, with the validation of the system with our csv folks uh, and also in addition maybe uh, with our technical folks if it's about implementing a a specific interface or a device integration or whatever, uh, where we do help with our technical folks in that very project. So why would you work with Vega? Uh, I think it is especially our dual qualification um, and the combination of the scientific and informatic skills, which is quite uh, unique. Our experience, we are uh, more than 25 years uh, in business successfully and independent. We are neutral uh, in terms of vendors. We, we do know uh, all the main vendors in, the, in, in, in our areas and we uh, all also have strategic partnerships with many of these vendors, but they're non-commercial partnerships. And I think this is very important that we do have that neutrality and can help you um, in, uh, in these areas. And we also work a lot on uh, innovative initiatives, uh, how to use blockchain in serialization, how to apply blockchain technologies for uh, uh, securing a distributed audit trail, for instance, how to bring agility into non-agile uh, environments, etc. So this is all our uh, uh, bread and butter, really, where we do have loads of experience. We're currently a bit more than 100 employees 
with a headquarter in Basel and a subsidiary in Germany. Um, and uh, we also do have uh, employees in uh, Poland. Okay, now let's dive into the topic. So, how a digitalized lab should look and feel like? Um, this is, as I said initially, really thought to be an inspiration. We're not trying to sell you a product or an informatic solution or a hardware product. We like to show you what's important in our view on your journey to a digitalized lab. And of course, uh, we will have a bit of a focus as well on what standards uh, uh, play as a role in, in this journey. Uh, but it's not only that, you will see that right away. So, what is digital transformation in your lab? Talking to different people, you get different opinions, way different opinions. People see many different aspects of digitalization. Depending on who you talk to, people might think about, okay, this is automation, this is robotics, really lab robotics, lab automation. Others maybe think more about, okay, I'd like to, optim uh, to, to automate the data flow, sample processing. I like to automate the decision or monitoring process, tracking and requesting, etc. Yet other people might think about, okay, the digitally transformed lab is accessible. Everything's online. Uh, there is collaboration tools, etc. It's just everywhere. Uh, data is available uh, everywhere. Yet another group of people will think about connectivity. So everything is plug and play, integrated. And last but not least, uh, there is data integrity uh, topics that are interesting in that connectivity context. And everything's reliable. And also, uh, other people might think about okay. Uh, the digital transformation in a lab leads us to an intelligent lab which employs machine learning uh, uh, algorithms and artificial intelligence to actually help you do the work. Now, we believe yes, <laughs> everything's right, maybe, but we actually took it from another perspective and we, 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 we thought, okay, what is the required foundation to actually do a successful digitalization. We believe the foundation for success is, of course, from a technical perspective, a proper architecture with integration layers when it, uh, talking about connecting systems, connecting instruments, connecting devices, etc. And of course, we also believe it's very, very vital that you do proper use of standards like SELA, standardization in lab automation, NEML, Analytical Instrument Markup Language, and BPMN. And um, also the focus, and this is last but not least, the focus on user experience and us usability. I think this is a very important aspect, and we believe that the successful path to digitalization is actually based on all these three things that are listed here. I'd like to dive into these three aspects a bit more and just highlight uh, a few of our thoughts and how we see um, we see that and uh, try to explain why we believe that makes a lot of sense like that. Let's start with the architecture. Uh, this is an example of how a architecture uh, of an integrated digitalized lab may look like. And I don't want to go into the details of all of these layers. I'd really like to focus on this integration layer as we believe that the integration layer is a key component on your journey for digitalization. You see a lot of familiar terms probably on the enterprise application layer. You see a lot of familiar terms in the device layer, I believe. And you probably can also understand the data analysis layer. So what you can actually could do once you have acquired the data and want to find a path towards knowledge. But the integration uh, layer is vital for a successful digitalization of your lab. And the main purpose of this layer is, of course, decoupling of the system. So this is not really new and not maybe very interesting. There is a lot of like enterprise service buses and, and systems like that that do the property coupling. But I think it's important uh, that you do that. And then there is workflow orchestration. And then maybe you might think, OK, what is workflow orchestration now if you compare that maybe to an LES system, to a laboratory execution system? And what we mean here by workflow orchestration is really a lower granular or finer granular workflow orchestration. Just think about 
a LES system which executes a method in a lab and this method would contain a sample preparation step. The sample preparation step would maybe have some input parameters and some specifications, uh, but actually the execution of the sample preparation step would involve maybe two weighings and a pH adjustment or maybe a dilution step. And this is the level of workflow orchestration that we see in, in, in the integration layer, where it just maybe makes sense to do that at the lower level because the, the LES system is just too far away from the actual uh, instruments and of the actual control. But uh, very, very important, maybe yet the most important part is the standardization. Latest on the integration layer, you should start uh, with the data standardization. Yeah, there is a zoo of different instruments and different data formats down here. And latest on the integration layer, you should start standardizing your data into a standardized format with the appropriate metadata attached to it. And of course, you can also do it down here. I mean, it's even better if your uh, photometer already delivers standardized data, then you don't have to do it up here. But latest in the integration layer, you do have to do that. And I think just thinking this way and along these lines uh, from an architectural perspective helps a hell of a lot uh, to actually create a great uh, foundation for your digitalization. This is just listing a few of the things that you maybe get in addition or maybe not so obvious. Um, but of course, with this type of uh, architecture, uh, you get very high data availability. You can be very agile and you can get faster decisions. This architecture is super scalable and very flexible at the lower cost of ownership in total. And you also make yourself independent from vendors. Of course, there is all many different vendors involved here, but the whole architectural uh, picture doesn't depend on one single vendor. And uh, integration of lab standards, I come to that, is definitely a very good base, right? And then there is a lot of other things that will come into the future. I think uh, labs will more and more make use of cloud services that have to be integrated into a local architecture. And then again, standards play a very important role uh, there. Okay. And also, I mentioned that the workflow orchestration, uh, the ability to capture metadata at the uh, source, basically, and then make advantage of the, of the uh, enabling uh, standards. Now, the driver, uh, I mentioned standards a lot now. I mentioned uh, connectivity and data standards, and I want to dive a bit more into that. And this sentence here uh, maybe <clears throat> uh, is very interesting if you compare that to, okay, I have a friend in, in a lab next door he wants to share spectroscopic data with me, but I can't actually look at it because I don't have the software that was used to, to do that spectrum. So um, I think this is a very clear illustration why standards are so vital and so important uh, to be present also in our industry. Now, to actually make full the full use of the architecture I've been showing a few slides earlier, we need to have standards that uh, enable the connectivity and the data. I said that. So basically, you have many systems, uh, instruments, devices, electronic lab notebook, limb systems, whatsoever in your uh, lab. And these things have to be able to find each other. These things have to be able to describe the capabilities so that another system can make use of yet another uh, system. And then there needs to be standards to actually orchestrate and command these different services into a into a uh, workflow. So it's very obvious that the standards are the foundation here. And once you have that, you can also do these fancy machine learning and artificial intelligence stuff on top of that, but not before, right? That's, um, I think, one of the key messages and uh, the take home messages here. Now, Talking about uh, standards, I mentioned it before as well. Uh, communication standards, I think uh, there is almost no way around uh, CELA. CELA is the only standard which is established in uh, life science or life science uh, communication between services and systems. Some of you might have heard maybe of OPC, but OPC is really suitable for industrial automation and not made for uh, the, the, the type of interaction models and data that is 
actually coming up in labs. And then data standards, uh, the analytical instrument markup language uh, is um, definitely the way uh, to go. Um, uh, maybe you have heard of uh, Allotrop as well. Um, if you compare these two, um, they cover basically a very similar use case, but we want to focus on animal here just due to the business model and the, the, the openness. Uh, animal is like SELA, free of royalties and licenses, and uh, it's a very accessible uh, format, which has as SELA has a very low total cost of ownership, and therefore it's just very much suitable for that case. And then for the workflow orchestration, there is a business process modeling notation, BPMN, which is extremely uh, widely used and it makes a lot of sense to apply uh, things and just steal things from other industries that work well, right? Now, the last point, remember you had three things, the architecture, the use of standards and the user experience. I think this is often forgotten, but I, I believe it's very, very important. We have to bring the user interface close to the user. If you think about the user in a lab, that user focuses on the lab work. That user is not interested to work on a PC. Uh, very often, a tablet cannot be used in the lab due to gloves or the chemistry. Very often, there is not enough room for a PC right in a lab. So it's vital that you bring the SOP directly to the instrument, that you have a full user guidance directly to the user, uh, at the user. And therefore, we created um, the so-called digital lab in a nutshell to actually make this whole thing, the architecture, the standards and the usability, very, very tangible. We actually created <clears throat> small instruments that basically in the background, they are driven by, uh, by Raspberry Pis running on battery. They all have Wi-Fi built in and they all are SILA servers that provide SILA services um, over the network and support the animal uh, standards and uh, why have we done it like that? Um, uh, we wanted to have something that we could just bring along to show, and that's why we did not use like real devices. And they also wanted to be able to carry around these things without breaking an analytical balance, etc. Yet still, all these instruments actually work. They are analytical instruments and that work, and I have a function, and the workflow can actually be shown. But you also see that all of these instruments have a touch screen. They have uh, visual and haptical, uh, uh, haptical feedback. So you can basically directly add the user in a lab, notify the user uh, when to do what, right? And the user can really focus on the lab work. And we will be able to demo that to you. Let's discover together how it feels to work in a digitalized lab. The production creates samples while the samples are registered in the LIMS system, a test order is created. The quality control lab receives samples for testing. The lab technician uses an active scanner to scan the sample. The query goes to the LIMS, which determines which tests must be performed with this sample. Then, the lab technician selects the sample preparation. The test label is automatically printed. The target weight and its tolerance are retrieved from the limbs and displayed on the balance. After pressing the tower button, the lab technician weighs in the sample. The visual indicator turns green as soon as the sample weight is within the tolerance limits. The weight is transferred to the limbs and the result is displayed on the balance. The sample weigh-in is now completed. The scanner becomes active again and is ready for the next sample. This was a quick overview on how it feels to work in a digitalized lab. If you want more information about it, visit www.vega-it.com. So anybody of you is interested in seeing that demo, just ping me, please. 
uh, or put the question into the, the question box and then we get in contact and we will be able to show you that demo live in a maybe one hour session online and uh, interact uh, with you and discuss uh, how these things work. Just a, a bit, uh, a few impressions of the whole thing. So we're actually using a so-called CLA browser here, which is a kind of a digital twin for the physical instrument that you see on the left. Uh, and then yet yeah, these different uh, physical instruments, they're all CLA services. They can be put very easily into a workflow using the business process model notation. Also here, what we used is uh, an openly available uh, Kamunda based BPMN workflow execution that we just enhanced with the CLA support. And now we can do a graphical, uh, basically drag and drop creation of your workflow and actually run that then right uh, away. This is a, yet another impression of the balance. And uh, also when you can monitor data, record the data, etc. In this video, we're going to demonstrate you how the Scylla client and browser interaction works. The lab technician switches the device on. The device is an environment sensor that records the temperature, pressure, and humidity of the environment. As soon as the device is switched on, the Scylla server sends out broadcast messages that can be discovered by Scylla clients. We use the Scylla client implementation of unit flow to search for the device. The environment sensor was found. A green dot on the upper right hand side indicates that the device is online and ready for operation. The Scylla client has discovered the features of the Scylla server. We use the feature interaction service to display a message on the environment sensor's display. For this purpose, we type a text for the parameter message in the command display message and execute the command. Instantly, the message shows up on the device screen. In the feature Humidity, Temperature and Pressure Provider, we select the Refresh button for the property Temperature. This queries the current temperature from our Scylla server. If you want more information about Scylla client and browser, visit www.vega-it.com. Devices that do not have Scylla integrated can easily be converted into a Scylla server by connecting a Scylla converter box. Lab Technician connects the Scylla converter box to the label printer. Simple plug and play principle to make any device Scylla compatible. The printer is now a Scylla server and can be discovered by Scylla clients. The Scylla server label printer has the feature label printer controller. We use the Unite Flow Scylla client to execute the command print label sample. First, the parameters has to be entered. Then, the label will be printed by clicking the execute button. The parameters entered by the user appear on the printed label. If you're interested in Scylla Converter Box, please visit www.vega-it.com. I think this is what I wanted to show uh, in this 20 minutes, very short. I'm here also in the chat for you to answer questions, etc. I'm happy to take questions. And as I said, also happy to um, take uh, requests for uh, demos. So feel, please feel free to contact me. Uh, in case of questions and if you're interested. Thank you very much for your attention.